Well, thank you for staying with the Monday Report. Just in time for that conversation that we promised earlier on, we're talking about the digital lenders who regulates them and where do they get the rights to call everybody in your phone book without consent, all right? That's the conversation we're having at Trevor Media at Citizen TV. Can you use the hashtag Monday Report? Let me introduce my guest real quick. Kevin Mutiso is here. He's the chairperson, Digital Lenders Association of Kenya. We call it DLAC. Thank you for making time, Chair. I know you're the one who will be in the receiving end. Ivan Mboa is also here, CEO Tala. Thank you so much for making time. And Honorable Gideon Keter, nominated member of parliament, is also here. He is pushing an amendment in parliament to have the digital lenders regulated. He'll tell us how far he's gone with that so far. But first, I want to give you the opportunity to ask all your questions before I even ask any of mine. Let's start bringing up the videos that we already have. You know, when I was being called by the uh, collection agents about that uh, particular loan, uh, my member's loan, uh, I was being called by three apps, Elcash, Lion Cash, and Cash Plus for the same loan. How does that work? Chair, yeah. you go first. Well, um, these are some of the digital lenders that, uh, in fact, yesterday did a report where I was saying we called out di these di drug digital lenders. Um, the ones that the pastor has just mentioned are actually some of the rogue digital lenders we've identified. Um, we've reported them to all the relevant uh, parties and ecosystem players such as the Central Bank, Office of the Data Commissioner, and other stakeholders in the industry because what they're doing is illegal, what they're doing is wrong, um, and they're contravening the Data Protection Act 2019. Where's the list of these rogue lenders, like you say? Well, you see, the challenge is because we don't have uh, regulation in place yet, yeah. um, it is very easy to set up one of these businesses. Um, and therefore, because of that, you find that one owner can set up one business with three brands and then make you know all the noise that they're making in this market. So these businesses that have just been named are actually owned by one sort of party. And then um, they have these three brands that harass customers in the public. Ah, oh, Keter, is that what you're working on so far? How far is your bill? Uh, yes, the bill is so far is at the committee stage, whereby we've invited yeah, the Digital Lenders Association as well yeah. to come and share with us their experience, what's happening in the market, as well as uh, we've invited even other people as well to try and find a way we can have an enforceable contract yeah. between the lender and the borrower and then bring sanity within the, 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 the business space yeah. to enable now the small businesses or the borrowers and the lenders also to do business without really having difficulties and, and doing what, what is happening, like shaming. Yeah. Yes. Mm. What are the highlights of your bill? I mean, how is this going to protect the <coughs> consumer? What, uh, what the bill is trying to give powers to the central bank yeah. to do the following. Number one is to license the credit service providers, uh, the uh, digital credit providers. Yeah. Then to also determine the capital adequacy. For instance, you cannot say you have uh, 100,000 and you want to initiate or be part of digital credit providers. And another thing is to determine <coughs> the liquidity of a digital credit provider. Yeah. Liquidity means you cannot say we don't want you to invite people to your platform and then they borrow within 10 minutes and it is over so such such re, such things another thing the central bank has to do is to supervise and then after supervising they can as well revoke a license if we have bad characters or the people who behave like now the the few who have been mentioned yeah. of uh, shaming people and and the rest so they can be they can be, uh, pres they, c they can get the punishment okay. uh, because the central bank is, is the one uh, uh, monitoring. At okay. the same time, uh, this came in a wake where 3.2 million were listed in Credit Reference Bureau. And, uh, <clears throat> and the central bank as well was concerned that uh, uh, when, when you have a country that has more millions and millions of people who are listed yeah. in CRB. It becomes also a challenge to to the citizens to prosper and do their businesses. Yeah. So that is where, uh, at some point, central bank decided to uh, sh stop 
stop the digital lenders yeah. who are not regulated because there are some who are regulated okay. who are not regulated from sharing the uh, or listing anyone in the credit reference bureau okay. because we all know credit when you're listed in credit reference bureau yeah. it has other effects especially to a young person mm -hmm. uh, which also spill into another problem when you're looking yeah. for a job you will yeah. be required to clear okay uh, so it is a ripple effect it's an ecosystem yeah. that took so long uh, it, it can make someone stay uh, listed for a long time and that affect us as a country yeah. because we want we want kenyans who are progressive kenyans yeah. who can do business with ease okay let me bring in ivan on this and ivan you're the md for tala what are some of the greatest challenges you're facing as a tala md on this issue because i'm getting a picture from the chairman that there are some who are regulated others are not is that the case that is correct. I think one of the biggest issues that we face um, is that there are two camps of digital lenders in Kenya. I would say that those who are members of the Digital Lens Association in Kenya and who are looking to adhere to the highest standards of professional conduct. They want to ensure that consumers are treated with respect. Uh, there's transparency in our dealings. And then you have a few rogue actors that exist outside of this group. But the problem is the actions of a few rogue actors begin to reflect negatively and everyone, including organizations like Tala, um, who have been founding members of DLAC. So what we're finding is that we're, we're fighting a negative perception issue that is being caused by a few rotten apples, right? Uh, who are in many ways maligning the name of an industry that's done a lot more good for Kenyans. You know, we as Tala have served millions of Kenyans along with other hundreds of apps. Uh, Kenyans who maybe not been able to access credit if we're not for apps like ourselves. And we want to make sure that Kenyans remember this positive story. But that story, it, it's hard to tell when you have cases like what was highlighted yesterday on Citizen, right? Uh, with a few actors acting, you know, in ways that are just unprofessional. So what would be the best way forward then? Because how do you sift through the chaff? Because Kenyans don't know. I mean, people push their agenda there. They're just asking you to borrow and you borrow. How do you tell which is which? That's a really good point. Um, so I think in a pre-regulated environment, uh, Kenyans can really look to the membership of DLAC, the Digital Lenders Association in Kenya, and we can assure you that our members adhere to standards which would keep their interests safeguarded. But in the world in which we're regulated, I think it will be very clear. If, you know, the responsibility will go to the Central Bank of Kenya. We'll have to ensure that those who they're licensing, those who they're allowing to operate, are adhering to the rules that have been set. And so effectively, uh, if you are a Kenyan, I would say do not borrow from a platform that is not regulated once we're all regulated. I think that's essentially how uh, Kenyans will be able to navigate some of these challenges uh, very soon. Yeah. Chair, is it much more difficult to borrow from these people who are under the DILAC, which is the Digital Lenders Association of Kenya, as compared to the others who you are now calling rogue? Um, no. The products that are in the DLAC ecosystem cover all types of uh, micro-entrepreneurs, informal sector entrepreneurs, SMEs, MSMEs. They go through the same sort of uh, appraisal process. They take your data, they then appraise it digitally, they say reject, approve. And then the next step, of course, is disburse. The difference between us and the rogue lenders is usually the debt collection practice and the ethos and the professionalism behind the business. So most of us in the Digital Lenders Association of Kenya, what we are trying to solve is that financial inclusion story. We're trying to solve how do we put together that two, 200 billion shilling MSME financing gap and solve it by, with, with our solutions, right? Yeah. On the, uh, the flip side, you've got a, a, a rogue lender who's trying to take advantage of a vulnerable group of people who are desperate for capital, um, rather money, and they you know, want to take advantage of them. Yeah. So they also have very punitive interest rates, they have very punitive late payment charges, very punitive, um, um, what do you call them, uh, terms and conditions that you know most all DLAC members do not have. So that's the main difference. In terms of accessing, it's usually the same, but the difference is comes when now it comes to debt collection. Okay. Yeah. Let me bring up another question from the viewers who are watching this evening. Hello. Under which consumer body do Shylocks fall under? Kenyans need protection over these people. 
wakati wanakukopesha bwana wanalimi mtamu sana na sasa hiyo wewe uko broke wacha wakati wa kulipa ufike ushindwe kulipa kidogo wanachota mpaka zile vitu hamukusikizana kuku kila kitu hata fans ya nyumba wanaenda nayo <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> okay so they pick everything including kuku and fences and everything uh, <laughs> how how can this be sorted out or is true <coughs> because it is true when they come to you they don't put up everything on the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh the best way so far from best from here being able to listen to the lender yeah and the borrower. I think uh, all of them want to serve one person. Yeah. That is the borrower. That is the customer. And since it is a new idea yeah in the country whereby as legislators as well we are trying to catch up with that space is if now the lenders and the banks can form a partnership and provide a joint advisory or joint guidance to the consumer for example how you find some banks are able to uh, have their own digital platform where they can lend money same case to fintech companies they can easily partner with a certain bank because i don't think for example ncba w- should find any harm including tala in their mshwari since both of them can easily operate within the same bank so that we, we can have a win win they win and the customer win and all of us know that if you go through this process you'll be able to get money this way and you should pay in this manner yeah but if a digital lender uh, I'm a digital credit provider decides you know the problem now is with the technology they tend to fall or slip through the cracks of regu- regulations mm. and then we try to catch up so, so before that happens definitely one party will be will not be satisfied yeah so it will be good if now central bank come in so that we can work from there and it will get to a point maybe they will feel uh, maybe it is not fitting yeah to to be attached to a bank then by that time will be will also as a country have best practices mm-hmm. that can enable one to be on stand alone okay. because internet is free and uh, there are some cost actually the those people who want to set up this are also incurring and then there's a cost consumer also is having and all what we just want to do as legislators and for anybody doing business in, in in country is to grow their business and to create jobs yeah ivan what do you make of that partnership is this something you're willing to pursue even in the interest of just protecting the consumer <clears throat> i think honorable gacha does raise an interesting um alternative path um i ultimately believe that there are things that digital lenders like ourselves do really well that traditional banks suffer from and then likewise their competencies or strengths that traditional banks have that digital lenders don't have and so it is actually my belief that you will see a lot more partnerships coming together uh between your traditional uh, sort of fintechs and digital lenders and banks um you know i i can't specifically speak to the possibility of tala uh, and within mshari but i do think that um the idea of a digital lender like Tala partnering with the bank is actually something that you will be seeing pretty soon. Yeah. Um so yeah, there's some, there's some truth to that. Yeah. How do you decide how do you collect your money back? Ivan. Um well actually the art of loan collection actually begins with who you who you choose to lend to in the first place. So we spend a lot of time um coming up with the rules that help us determine who should get the credit and how much and how how long should you offer it? because ultimately once the due date comes to be honest with you especially in the environment that we're in where there's no longer an option to negatively list a default it you're very much relying on a relational um impulse between the borrower and your company to repay that loan uh, and so in the absence of that we do, we conduct sort of traditional loan collection methods so we will um you know message the customer within our application we will call the customer um but ultimately at some point in time we may have to make a decision around writing off the loan and unfortunately writing off the relationship so uh, nothing special uh, other nothing too unusual um as compared to any other lender 
Yeah. Um, ultimately, just to repeat again, we spend a lot of time focusing on who we choose to lend to because that really helps us when it comes time to loan collection. Right. Um, the better your knowledge is of the borrower, the yeah. easier it will be to collect. Okay. Yeah. Kevin, why don't you just publish the list of these people you're calling the rogue lenders so that Kenyans sure. know these are the people we shouldn't borrow from and these are the people we should borrow from? Ah. No, we are working on that, by the way. And we are collating a lot of evidence because you see, this is we, we, we work in a legal framework. So calling somebody out without any evidence is illegal also. So we have to go through the steps and the processes that will enable us to ensure that once we print that list, um, there sh they, they won't be any pu uh, uh, pushback on us from a legal point of view and even for our businesses. Yeah. Right? So we have to be careful, but we are working on that. But there's a way you can circumvent that. Mm -hmm. Instead of publishing the people which we should not borrow from, publish the people we should borrow from then. We have, so that if fact, you're not in that list, I know this is not the person I want to borrow from. So we have a list on uh, the digital lending website, dlak.co.ke, where you have a list of all our members yeah. and all the different products they offer. And sh soon, uh, very soon, we shall also be updating the pricing and all the different, uh, different aspects of the loan products. Yeah. Yes. Can tell this regulation you're talking about, will it at least cap the interest rate also, or even have it standardized? Sure. Since, uh, since, since you will be attached to and you'll be supervised, one of the things you'll be required is at least share the costings. And when you share the costings, it needs to make sense based on our central bank uh, gaps. You see, yeah. when central, central Bank can provide a guideline on how you should participate in some, in some kind of business around lending of money. And then at the same time, besides uh, going to enable the digital credit providers to list, it yeah. also pre prevent, help us as a country or help the borrowers from an instance like pyramid. In the past, we've had pyramid schemes who, who run away f with someone's money. Yeah. What happens? When, when that happens, when, when such a, let's say, a cruel, if they can go to an extent of shaming you, they can as well go an extent of maybe at, at some point decide to go away with, with some of the information. If they can breach the, if they can breach the, the, if they can breach to an extent, they share your information with relatives and call your relatives and, and do all those things, meaning they can do anything yeah. to, in, in that extent. Okay. And I see here, Kevin, there's a, there's a question here. They called, someone says they called my parents and told them if I don't pay a loan of 2,000 shillings, they will chop off my head. Mind you, I was only one day late. I could not find any place to complain. After some days, they sent all my friends, including my pastor, SMSs. Mind you, I am a worship leader and a deacon. That made me quit church. Where can I complain? Well... Uh, in the current bill uh, that is proposed, one of the proposals we made as the Digital Lenders Association is the idea of the ombudsman. And what the ombudsman should do uh, is to actually resolve these kinds of financial services issues um, and very specific to digital lending. In the short term and medium term, um, the Credit Information Sharing uh, Association of Kenya has uh, come up with a thing called Tatua Center. Um, and the Tatua Center is actually designed for these types of issues. And what they do is they not only collect the complaints, they also submit them in a specific way to the CBK uh, yeah. for their further action. Okay. Let's bring up more questions from the viewers that are sending them through. Why do, would a lender simply decide to send messages demanding for you to repay loan to all the contacts in your phone book. I've been receiving quite a number of messages from Okash, from Tala, among others, demanding that I pay loan that I didn't take. Is that really fair? Do they have other means of accessing the loans and accessing the people they had given the loans to pay back? Ivan, that is directly to you because you've been mentioned there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's a rather interesting mention. Um, you know, I, I think it's highly unlikely that um, Tala would ever sort of reach out to someone who did not have a relationship with us. However, uh, there is also a small probability, and this actually does happen, where you have forms of identity theft, uh, where perhaps this individual's details 
have been incorrectly used uh, to register and receive a loan. Although, as I said, this is highly improbable and only happens in very, very rare cases. Uh, but in essence, you know, we as Tyler do take care to understand and make sure that if you, John X, comes to Tyler uh, with ID number XYZ, we verify that indeed the ID matches the name. Um, and then likewise, we'll disperse into your mobile money wallet. But there are a few cases, unfortunately, where um, the, there's a bit of identity theft. And so sometimes, in fact, you might have the right name and ID, but the wrong phone number, which could result actually in a loan being dispersed to the wrong uh, individual. Yeah. That, I think that's perhaps the only, uh, the only possible explanation I can understand that might explain that. Okay. And we'll get it, it is illegal for them to access your contacts. And yes. even, first of all, just accessing your contacts is mm -hmm. wrong. It's even worse for them to call someone to else call who someone did else. not even consult to be a guarantor. Correct. How then do you regulate this? Uh, first of all, data sharing uh, or data protection is, is, a, is a criminal offense. It has, nobody has the power to share information with someone else. Now, uh, this, these unregulated people, uh, unregulated digital credit providers, they can go to that extent because we don't have a, a place we can pin them that this is, you did this based on this and this. That is why now the importance of us regulating that space is coming in. For example, a certain gentleman, uh, I think misplaced his ID somewhere. And then somebody decided to register, uh, to register a, a line and decided to go to street and borrow in like five, digital credit providers to a, a tune of around 40, 40,000. And to that extent, uh, this guy went on to his own, to do his own business. Later, when he wanted to now proceed, maybe do business and, and the rest or borrow a loan, then they end up being told that you, are, you owe certain and certain information, uh, certain and certain companies, this amount of money. Yeah. That one also comes into where, where, where as, as legislators are coming in. Part of the central bank is to approve the channels in which you use to, to do your mo the model of business. And that also boils down to Safaricom and Airtel. For example, now I think in Safaricom, you're not supposed to have more than certain number of lines. Mm. In the past, you could have as many as possible. And you, before you do that, I think you are supposed to be notified. That, that kind of regulation helped in, in the section of Safaricom. Now, we cannot be able to now to be able to understand what is happening on the digital space. That ends up to what happened to my friend over there who found someone calling from nowhere and identity theft. We just need a platform where they can share information. Just the same way, it's very rare for you to hear someone complaining with Mshwari or complaining with a, a, a digital provider linking with the bank. That is why central bank now requires at least yeah. where we the starting point is yeah. at least we can do the partnership so that the the user yeah. that is a consumer can have a win-win okay. where in in a way they are not going to lose their money because they know I can easily even if I don't know where their offices are yeah. I can easily get information from the nearest bank on how to access access this uh, uh, this credit and okay. that is the only way we yeah. can where we can start okay and and i want to encourage i, I want to actually applaud what uh, chairman is doing and the digital lenders are doing by shining on light on these bad people these bad characters that is one way of actually b being able to remove them from from the business space yeah. because all we want for any business do any person doing business in kenya is to start their own business and also do be able to employ many as many people as possible yeah that uh, on the section of employment, there was a company a few weeks ago who decided to fire almost half of the half of the employees without following any d due process. Yeah. So that is also affecting. It comes in because of the regulation aspect. Okay. And then you find young person who has been listed. When you're going to seek for employment, you'll be required to provide a clearance certificate from CRB. Mm. And the, 
it, is, it, is, it cripples the entire country. Yeah. And as, as legislators, we only, our work is to ensure that we have enforceable contracts. Okay. An enforceable contract will enable, will, will attrain, bring sanity within, within the business. Oh. Yeah. Ivan, have you interacted with this bill that uh, Honorable Keter is pushing, and are you in agreement with it? Um, absolutely. Tala and the Digital Lending Association of Kenya are, are actually in favor of regulation of our industry. Um, and while we may have a few points of difference in how that regulation is actually affected, overall it is in the right direction. Um, I do think that there are many challenges that exist today in this current environment where you have an, an unregulated you know, scenario and therefore you're relying on some good actors to behave professionally and while others continue to act unprofessionally. Um, that being said, I think what our greatest fear is, and this is where we tend to sometimes disagree, is we just want to make sure as much as we see the urgency and the need to act as quickly as possible, we have to be careful. Um, you know, fintech is a very young industry in Kenya. Uh, Tala is one of the oldest uh, digital lens in Kenya, and we're only seven years old in Kenya, right? We came in a few months after Mishwari. The vast majority of the hundreds of apps you see today are perhaps less than five years old. Um, and so I think we just have to be careful that we don't end up killing the industry as we look to actually address some of the very legitimate concerns that have given that have arisen in the way in which customers are treated, um, you know, in terms of people contacting the entire phone book. You know, we all, I think we can all agree that's just not um, something that can be allowed to continue. But at the same time, we want to make sure that you're not treating digital lenders like banks because in, in essence, we're not the same. We present very different risks to Kenya and very different risks to consumers. Um, and so that's where we tend to disagree in terms of how we do the regulation. But in summary, we are in favor of regulation of our space. Um, and we continue to engage both with Honorable Kater, members of the Parliamentary Finance and Planning Committee, and all other involved stakeholders, just to make sure that we're sharing our views. And we can end up with regulation that addresses the issues without killing the industry. OK, let's bring up another question on video. What are the right procedure, rather the legal procedure a lender should use on a borrower when they default? I think there are more better ways of getting back your money than calling the people on the borrower's contact list. Chairman. So it seems that this debt shaming issue is the big, 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 big problem that we need to solve. Um, um, I empathize with the customers because the story, as Ivan Ali alluded to, and uh, Honorable Gideon Keter has alluded to, is that we're missing out on the big picture, right? The digital lending is one of the best inventions that we've ever come up with. The other thing is that we have been number one in, in the world on the, on the fintech space because we have figured out to do very complex things such as KYC, credit scoring, and disbursement without having to meet an actual human being. The challenge is now this debt shaming, right? This debt shaming is being performed by two or three, four, five bad actors that were only there a year and uh, two years from, uh, uh, have only been two years or three years old. And as Ivan has said, we have been here for six, seven years. We've been growing with the industry. We've gone through the, 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 the motions. I remember when the CRB was only 300,000 people, then 4 million people. Then now we have 14 million people. The CRB is always confused as a, as a blacklist. It is not a blacklist. It, is a, it just records your credit behavior. We are actually number one in Africa and number four in the world with the quality of our credit information sharing ecosystem. Right? So this debt shaming issue is the big problem. This bill is trying to solve that problem. Digital Lenders Association of Kenya is trying to solve that problem. And I really empathize with the customers. I, I, we, I, I think the best thing we can tell them is, you know, tell us, you know, share with us publicly who is doing this thing. Send us the screenshots, record the messages, and send them so that we have a better file when we are now sending it to, to report to the, to the big man in the, in the hill and, you know, they deal with them perpendicularly. Okay. <laughs> There's big enough questions that are coming through on Twitter here. I see Jacob Abere says, ask them why put one on CRB and continue asking one for money and on top 
the ladies and men on call and by threatening one that if you can't pay money with interest, they shall come for one's kidney, surely. You and you are just talking about this CRB issue just now. Yes. So then what should it take for one to be there? And how can these digital lenders be stopped from then just putting someone up because they couldn't pay a thousand shillings, five thousand shillings? Trevor, if you borrow a hundred thousand shillings and you pay it every time on time, you are in the CRB. What the, what the CRB will now know is that Trevor is a good payer. When Kevin takes 100,000 shillings and then pays two months and then misses a third month and then pays the other two months, all that data is in the CRB. The CRB is not a bad thing. That's the misconception. The CRB is a good thing. It, in fact, creates a layer of trust in society. Yeah. Because as Honorable said, when you want to go get a job, you have to show I'm a credible human being. At some point, we'll also be using the CRB for rent, right? Uh, I joked once that even maybe for marriage, yeah? <laughs> you know, you never know. But the CRB is not a bad thing, yeah. right? The problem here is the debt collection practices. It is illegal, right? The Data Protection Act is very clear on how we should handle third-party data, how we should seek consent, how that consent should be given, right? That's what we need to solve. And again, I say, we're, we're missing out on the big picture. Where are the entrepreneurs whose businesses have grown from 2,000 a day to 10,000 a day to 20,000 a day? They should also come out and say how our services and solutions have helped them. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's bring up another video question that's coming through. Trevor, this thing is serious. Because this random calling, at times, it may land on your mother-in-law or father-in-law's phone. And that is when you will know uh, how these in-laws can at times harass you. So it should just be regulated and we should be protected. <laughs> John Nundiek there is concerned about his mother-in-law <laughs> getting a call from CRB. But Keter, yes. will this be something you can now stop, these calls? Is it part of the regulation that they will not be able to call you or will you then have to just do the usual guarantors as in the banks? Uh, because uh, w one of the main powers here yeah. Central Bank will have yeah. is to approve the business model. And we will, no we will not accept to approve them calling people yeah. in your phone book. If someone has defaulted, there is a way you can recover. Yeah. And then in that business model, it can be easily be, be shared. They can propose. There's, there are so many ways. It's not the first time yeah. uh, we are collecting debts. And once they are regulated, it is easy to even give to an, an, uh, a registered auctioneer yeah. after following due process. And you will be, you'll be knowing someone is coming for me. Yeah. Yes. And that is, we are, not, we are Kenyans. We are not running away from Kenya. Yeah. So why should you go after someone? And definitely, as a lender, you just need to understand, at some point, my customer might decide might not be able to pay. And in, in a good environment, we want also the lender to feel safe to, yeah. to lend money in, in a society. Because we don't, just, we don't want to scare away investors. Yeah. We want investors to feel protected, and we want to also have uh, the borrowers feel protected. Yeah. So borrower's behavior is something the, the lender should be in a position to understand on how to uh, kind of like advice yeah. or or teach them because you see the problem with this with this uh, lending uh, one month lending is you don't take time to interact with your customer yeah. that if you don't pay with this this time this is what is happening because it is purely digital mm. so then it end it end up uh, affecting the lender with the borrower because there is something they are missing because sometimes we assume everybody must understand that after one month yeah. this should happen and that is now the other sector where digital lender, lenders association yeah. can encourage. You see, the, the beauty of an association is they will be able to have their own meetings and review what, is, what has gone well and yeah. what has gone bad. Okay. But the problem is now, I, I don't know if chairman will have to clarify if all members, if all digital credit providers are members of DLAC. And if someone is not a member of an association, that is where the problem is. Okay. Yeah, that is where the problem is. And I hope... Yeah. Uh, in your submission also you also submitted that uh, we need to consider that association as well okay. so All that right. we may be able you may be able to be an automatic ombudsman 
mm. before even we get to the central bank. Okay. Yes. Ivan, Ivan, where is the space for self-regulation in this whole quagmire that we're dealing with? Actually, I think Honorable Guterres actually just uh, introduced that topic really well. So, uh, in many ways, uh, and just to answer, I think, the question Honorable Guterres is saying, there may be 300 fintech apps in Kenya. Um, our membership is not 300 apps. So you really have the very best of those 300 are our members. Um, I think that there's a lot of room for self-regulated organizations because if you think of maybe the Central Bank of Kenya, they regulate today 40 banks, 45 banks. Um, maybe in a few months, they'll be regulating 45 banks plus hundreds of fintech platforms. And that introduces a lot of strain, a lot of cost, a lot of need for, you know, for more staff. So in many ways, it can actually sometimes even be cheaper uh, for the central bank to delegate some of these responsibilities, not everything, some of them. It could be saying, you know, uh, DLAC, we want to make sure that if anyone's a lender in Kenya, they must register with you first. You will then submit to us the information as follows in a certain format. Um, that could be one of the use cases of self-regulation. The other could be to maybe take the Digital Lenders Association uh, Code of Conduct. This is actually a set of rules which we created, which sort of lays out how we're going to conduct ourselves. Maybe that becomes also part and parcel of um, some of the rules that later on uh, both Parliament and Central Bank can enforce. So I, I see self-regulation in terms of a partnership model, one where maybe someone like the Digital Lenders Association of Kenya is really acting in service of the Central Bank we're like an outsourced party. We, we, we outsource a few of their responsibilities, not everything, it's a few. Um, and in many ways, we try and make sure that we can reduce the burden um, and be able to hopefully help them achieve the goals that they have. So I do think there is a model for self-regulated um, organizations using what already exists today. Um, and uh, we're more than happy to explore that. Although I know it will take maybe a bit of time before um, everyone can see the benefit of what we're proposing. Okay. Let's bring up the questions that are there on Twitter before we get back to the video questions. I see Devi Simba here. Let's bring that up. He says, I threatened to sue one of them on how they got my contacts seeking me to borrow from them. The person said they got our contacts from insurance company. Is this right for the insurance to share our contacts? I feel infringed. Is it, Chairman? It's legal. You see, that's what it's I was illegal. saying. Data Protection Act is yeah. very clear on how to access third-party data, how to access, access data from your phone, how to seek consent and how that consent must, you know, we have to prove we got that consent. There's actually three ways you must show it. Yeah. So that's illegal. And so they have the right to sue and if, if they can, they should. Okay, let's bring up another question here or a comment that we're seeing on Twitter. This is Bosire Crispin. Says, please highlight the need for digital lenders to engage lawyers specializing in digital rights to avoid violating various rights and to develop an effective lending matrix. Okay, let's see what, what else is there. See how, as much as uh, tweets as we can take. Sira Mambro says, um, even after paying the loan, you remain a defaulter in CRB servers for five years. Why? True. Is that true? It's a record. So when they pay, yeah. it is confirmed that they pay and they can go and get loans. In fact, yeah. the term that is used is risk-based pricing, right? And there's different methods of analyzing risk. And so if you have one default in 20 loans, it, it will just be a mark. It won't, it won't necessarily harm you, yeah. but it will be a record that you are able to pay. Um, there was that question of the lawyers. Right, that's a very good point, yeah. and we have, in fact, in February we um, launched a report in conjunction with PwC, and we actually invited uh, the honourable members of Parliament, and they came, and we looked at 11 unique markets and how all those markets are regulating digital lending, and we gave different, um, what do you call it, case studies. Yeah. What's happening in Poland? What's happening in Uganda? What's happening in Nigeria? What's happening in uh, the UK? What's happening in Australia? And we used lawyers who gave us, you know, that framework, and then we made a recommendation to the legislators. Right, so we are doing that. Okay. Gurengati says, Chairman of Digital Lenders and his membership are to blame for this uncouth and unorthodox ways of debt collection. I'm sorry, but he knows the illegal ones and should name them all for Kenyans to know. Maybe they should be abolished altogether. I'll give you a chance to respond to that, starting with Ivan. 
think that uh, while I understand the um, the anger uh, of the person who made that statement, I do think that it's a little short-sighted. Um, as Chairman of DLAC had explained, um, it, while it is easy to say a list of uh, rogue actors, it's also very easy for those rogue actors to also sue us right, uh, for effectively tarnishing their brand. And so we'd rather go through the proper channels and make sure that we are sharing the information that we have with those who are empowered by the law to go ahead and actually do something. And in terms of, you know, the, the final suggestion of saying maybe we should all be abolished, I think that is the very act of throwing out the dear baby with the bathwater, right? Uh, we must not forget that if we went for digital lending, you know, and Kenyans needed access credit, you would have to wait until nine o'clock tomorrow, walk to your nearest branch or, or drive to your nearest branch, sit and wait in a chair, fill out paper application forms, come and dress in your best suit, hope the bank manager is having a good day, and maybe get credit. And in many ways, we have saved Kenyans time, we've helped Kenyans grow their businesses, meet personal emergency, um, and so I would disagree uh, with the statement. I think that, yes, I agree, and I can see the anger uh, that he has, and it's justified, but Ultimately, I believe the digital lenders have done more good for Kenya than we have any bad. Okay. Call yourself on Mundia. Says, good job, Gideon Kateri. You're doing a great work, but it's time that CRB should have a limit that for a person to be listed should have more than 50,000, but below should not be listed. <laughs> All right. Is that yes. a possibility? Because that a default is a default. Yes, a default is a default. I don't think that will be possible. But what I think... What, once we introduce regulation, yeah. and uh, we can introduce other other things like pay for delete. I think other countries are practicing. Mm -hmm. You pay for to be deleted from the listing. You can easily negotiate with the lender. And then the lender, you have to you can pay some fee to be to remove your data from certain area because taking five years and making you not be able to access finances sometimes is a is a big, 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 big challenge okay. uh, to anyone who, who wants to uh, actually advance in business. Okay. Yeah. I have to take a quick break on the Monday report. When you come back, there's still a few more video questions that I want to pose and get a few more reactions online before we wrap it up. See you in a bit.